You ever leapt into a piece of entertainment only to be taken aback by how essential and precise it seems to be hitting every note that it needs to? There is this wash when a film or a game or a song or a theatrical performance hits all of the right notes. It usually happens pretty early on, and it almost guarantees that you will be hooked for whatever the remaining duration of this thing. It can be argued that this window, this introduction, can be easier or perhaps harder for mediums like video games. And depending on who you ask, regardless of the level of difficulty, it is nevertheless magical when everything just clicks. Mediums, such as video games, simply have access to all of or most of our senses allowing them to further implement their designs and plans to tug at those little strings. Engrossing the tendrils of art in its best form, which can be described as vaguely any art that quote-unquote does it for you, is something that can live with you for long periods of time. Especially when it's something like a video game in which you are asked to spend a lot more time with said art. Cut to what feels like years ago at this point, and developers Eggnut announced fundraising campaigns for their detective noir game set in an alternative universe Vancouver, British Columbia, populated by anthropomorphic animals. And finally, after a vast span of longing, Backbone was released on PC this week, and while I could have pulled back on the reins of excitement prior to leaping in, I didn't. And yet, it still lived up to my desires and expectations, and even blew them away in many cases. This is episode 11. The dystopian Vancouver sets a brilliant stage for breathtaking anthropomorphic noir. I am Wyatt Fawcett, and this is the first bite. You are going to have to take a lot of what I say in the following editorial podcast with a large grain of salt. I am, for one, incredibly indebted to the noir and detective worlds. From formative fiction to media of all kinds, this genre of storytelling has long since been a major part of my upbringing. It's jazz. In all forms. It's something beautiful that only pretends to play by the rules. Whether it be the written word, actual music, or in a setting. Jazz is an ideation that I am bound to. The narrative of Backbone rivals that of my favorites from Harlan Coben, Jim Butcher, Natsuo Carino, Megan Abbott, Raymond Chandler, the Coen brothers, and it oozes just enough of a Hunter S. Thompson topped with Wes Anderson flavor to keep me feverishly salivating. In addition to that, I would consider Vancouver, Canada as my hometown even though I've spent plenty of time away from it. Backbone being set in an alternative universe, a dystopian version of my hometown, means that the beauty and wonder in this scenery explode off the screen in my case. Every nook and cranny of this game catches one's eye, and I simply come to the table with a bit more familiarity with the source material. So take this as you will. Existentialism and conversations about ideology and socialism are the more overwhelming and far-reaching topics that truly get my blood pumping and birth a jitter in my hands. I am passionate about judgment, especially in the sense of our leadership and social behavior. In tandem, an expression of artistic desire, whether in forms that I understand or not, is always something I will give a moment of my time. 
We change, but we change nothing. The line of dialogue in Backbone, and it nearly perfectly exemplifies the journey we go through as private investigator and down bad raccoon, Howard Loder. Fantastically, there is a story and cast of characters in this adventurous and cantankerous take on the point and click gaming genre that astronomically impacts the player. Almost immediately in the first chapter of the game, which come brushed with noir-like chapter titles and oppressive fonts, your small-time informational sleuth of a character finds himself neck deep in something much larger and much darker. When I was in uni, I studied new media and web design. This factoid is semi-irrelevant here, but part of my studies included how to create a parallax website or image or even video. And ever since then, I'm always blown away by real artists take and attempts to make parallax construction function in an absolutely gorgeous way that I just simply cannot. This may seem like an ironically simple thing to say in a review or impression script about a video game, but running side to side in Backbone is so delightful. The impact the setting and the in-game art have on the experience of playing through this story-based game is beyond quality seen in the majority of this industry. There's a level of care put into the look and feel of this game that breeds obsession. I have spent more time standing still within Backbone, clocking every detail in a frame, than I have actually playing through the story. At an average of 20 screenshots a minute, I can safely say that the setting is equal to, if not the most important member of this cast. It is also no surprise that theoretical dystopians and political regimes, racial, or species-based inequality hits home pretty strongly during our current North American social climate. Seriously though, the when, where, and how this game is set and then visually actualized might be one of the greatest artistic achievements ever to grace my desk. All we ever wanted to do is show a little mirror of our souls and hope that in it, you can recognize yours. This was written by co-founders of Eggnut. They added, Do all of the beautiful things you are moved to do when you encounter something that makes you feel. It is why we made this game. This is just part of an appreciation letter penned by the two co-founders of the studio behind Backbone. Is it wrong that the sentiments they share regarding their own artistic efforts further my adoration for any and all of the people involved in making this game? Had the art or the story or the journey not struck such a chord with me, would any of that, the integrity and intention behind the creation, actually mean anything in the end? It doesn't matter, I suppose. Creatives made a piece of art and adventure I partook and thoroughly fell in love with it, and then they share that they possess many of the same ideals regarding said art that I do, which could spell that I am possibly too much their target audience. But I do not believe that Backbone is playing to a niche audience. Sure, perhaps some of the many facets behind this entire package may not strike such a voluminous chord and that doesn't mean that the rest of what is in this puzzle won't work for you. There's a level of nuance in Backbone, something that few will see in totality, something that few will experience in formality, something that almost no one will be able to appreciate on every level, which in turn makes it a true independent piece of art. Should you experience this piece of art propped up by its form of interaction, which is a beautifully constructed adventure detective noir game that painstakingly picks apart your perception of social classes and pedophilic elitism. The answer, as it turns out, is a long time coming, but it's also easy. Yes, you should.
From the moment I saw a teasing glimpse of what this game was going to look like, I wanted to dive in and gather in every flake of dust from start to finish. What Eggnut eventually delivered is a truly exceptional experience from the moment the executable launches, that music kicks in. Mentally, emotionally, theoretically, Backbone is a dizzying example of firing on all cylinders to meticulously convey a story in all aspects. Ask me in the spring of 2022 which games of 21 I still hold as dear to me, and Backbone is going to have one of the longest lasting impressions, especially as you start to be swamped through to your soul by the questions and ghosts of mortality within this experience. I dare you to play this game and tell me you aren't still thinking about it long after you've closed out of the application. Backbone is currently available on all major PC game launchers and is set to come to Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo consoles later this year. Thank you again for tuning in for another week. Um, I've been having a lot of fun paying attention to some of the more personal and idyllic games these last few weeks and writing these scripts has become more and more fun as the weeks go on we are now 11 weeks into the show and i'm still having a ton of fun and look forward to fridays every week i also really appreciate everyone that goes out of their way to say hi on social media on our youtube page um either with suggestions uh, criticisms of the show or even just to talk about how much they like the game we're talking about you can easily find me on twitter at Wyatt Fawcett which is the best place to say hi you could also subscribe to our youtube channel and check out the visualization of this podcast or you can head on over to wfaucet.com slash legend and read this script if that's your preferred delivery method again I can't thank you enough for tuning in I really suggest that you go onto YouTube find Eggnut's YouTube channel I might actually link the YouTube playlist in the podcast description and put on the Backbone soundtrack while you listen to this or while you're doing your daily routine experience this game and part of the magic is the soundtrack that has been created for this journey and it's truly wonderful actually all of Backbone is truly wonderful so thank you again for tuning in and I will talk to you next week take care